Hey guys, I'm sorry because today is our last video for Stereo Cap. <laughs> okay, but seriously, try and hold back those tears because this is, in fact, our last video on our tour through Stereo Chemistry. And I keep saying this, but actually, the real OCHEM starts after this. But before we get there, I want to tackle Fisher projections. Really, just think of Fisher projections as a different way to look at structures. Usually, you know, we're used to seeing the bond line structures we've been drawing, and now that we've been doing some stereo chemistry, you know, there's some wedges, there's some dashes with certain groups on them. Well, Fisher projections kind of change up the game a little bit. So, let me just kind of show you what one looks like. So here's, instead of having that zigzaggy across, up and down type deal, we kind of just draw a cross. So here's a one carbon Fisher projection. And let me just fill in some groups for you guys. All right. So here's what a Fisher projection is. There's no wedges or dashes. There are, but they're kind of implied. But we draw it flat on a page or on a board or what, whatever you're writing on. So this is what it looks like. This is a carbon. Same type of intersection type thing indicates a carbon. But let me kind of show you what this kind of translate to translates to in terms of wedges and dashes. So what's kind of weird is that the sides are coming at you while the top and bottom are coming away from you. So it's super weird. You'll eventually get used to it. But something that's always stuck with me was a professor I TA'd for, Dr. Erica Houston uh, for OCHEM 1. She always said Fisher projections, the sides are arms coming out to hug you, and for whatever reason, that's always stuck with me. So just know that these sides are wedges, they're coming at you, and the top and bottom, they're coming away from you. So everything, we, everything we've talked about still applies, right? You always want your lowest priority group to be facing away from you. You assign based on a priority, based on molecular weight. All of that is still absolutely 100% valid. So if we are going to assign RNS to this carbon, because he is in fact a stereo center, right? Because we're attached to a chlorine, a fluorine, a bromine, and iodide. That's four different things. So of all of these atoms, fluorine is the lowest priority if you're going to look at a periodic table. So luckily he's facing away from us, so we can just assign and then directly apply R or S. So iodine is the heaviest, bromine is the second heaviest, chlorine is third heaviest, fluorine is facing away from us right through the board. So we would be going this way. We turn a car to the left. That means this carbon would be S. So really, nothing bad at all. You guys are already experts in Fisher projections. So let's do one quick example. I'm going to erase it and throw it up on the board. And then I want to talk about how you convert between Fisher projection to bond line. OK? Because I do have that on the worksheet for Fisher projections. OK. So here's. Uh, just a random fish projection I cooked up for you. So let's just assign R and S. Then we'll figure out how to switch between, we'll toggle between Fisher projections and bond line. And then we will just tie a nice little bow on stereo chem and move on. All right. So as you can see, we have a stereo center at this carbon as well as this carbon because we have four different groups attached here as well as down here. Okay. So let's just look at this carbon and block out everything kind of down here. Directly attached, we have an oxygen in the alcohol, a CH3, a hydrogen, and then the rest of this chain down here. So there's no, it's a no-brainer that this OH is the first priority group. Then we kind of have a tie, right, because directly off this group, we have a carbon and a carbon. But you can just see he's attached to just hydrogens, whereas he's attached to a whole bunch of stuff like an iodine. So this group down here gets number two. Then methane comes in at number three. So remember, the sides of the Fisher projections come out directly at us, coming out to hug us, right? So this hydrogen, our lowest priority group, is coming out us, coming out at us. So we're going to assign and then see whether it would be RNS and then take the opposite, right? Because our lowest priority group is coming at us. So it looks, it looks like S, so that means we have R at this stereo center. All right, awesome. So I'm going to kind of erase these rankings just to make it a little clear for the bottom. All right, so now let's check out this carbon. Iodine is easily the highest priority group. 
Again, we kind of have a CH3 type scenario like we did above. So the chain above is number two. CH3 is, a, is the third priority group. Now this time, hydrogen is on the below, the, the group going down. So that means he's actually facing away from us. So we can just go ahead and straight up apply R and S. It looks like S, and sure enough, it is. Okay, so let me erase this, throw up another structure, and I'll show you how to go from a Fisher projection to a bond line structure. Okay, truth be told, I'm not sure, at least at Pitt, if you'll have to do this in OCHEM 1, but it does come up in OCHEM 2, and I think it's not the worst thing to know, so just stick with me on this. All right, so if we're going to go from the Fisher projection, FP, to a bond line structure, here's kind of how I go about it. So I look at all my stereo centers, and I usually give them dots. I then kind of draw my first dot. So let's just go over here, I'm going to make a dot. So it's all about remembering what groups are coming away from you and what kind of groups are coming at you and what groups are on your left or your right. Okay, so if I'm going to check out this stereo center right here, remember, this is a dash and this is a dash. So these guys are kind of going down. So if I'm going to just arbitrarily kind of give them two lines like that. So I almost need to take on this tippy-toe type of perspective where I'm looking down, right? Because if I was an eye and I was looking down right here, you'd agree with me that this CH3 right here and then this next carbon coming down, both going away from us, from this eye's perspective, they would be going away from him, right? Okay, hopefully that made sense. Now, I need to continue this perspective of the eye and I need to look, okay, how do I make this OH on this, the bond line structure and how do I represent the hydrogen? Well, we're using wedges and dashes here. So you can see if I'm looking dead head at this Fisher projection, the OH is on my right and the hydrogen is on my left. So from the perspective of this eye, if I'm looking like this, a wedge would mean coming out of the board and that would be on the right side of my body, whereas a dash would be on my left. So since the OH is on the right hand side and the dash is on the left, I'm going to give an OH a wedge, and I'm going to give the hydrogen a dash. Okay, hopefully that made sense. It's a little weird at first. This is truly some mental gymnastics. Okay, now here's where things get a little even stranger. Now what you kind of have to do is we've kind of finished off this dot, so now we're going to move on to our next stereo center dotted carbon. So what's weird enough is that we almost have to change our perspective. Right now our eye is going to be because our next carbon chain line is going to go up like this, right? If I'm going to asterisk this carbon, he would be up here. And remember, he's a dash, so he should be going away from us as far as perspective goes. So kind of stick with me on this, but now I'm going to draw my eye right here, right? Because if I take on this perspective, this line going to the terminal carbon in the Fisher projection, it's going away from me, right? So again, this really is some mental gymnastics. So what we need to do then is I need to look straight at my Fisher projection and say, okay, is the, hy the hydrogen's on my right and the bromine is on my left. So I need to represent that relative to this eye with wedges or dashes. So if I'm down here, right, a wedge would be on my left and a dash would be on my right because a dash would go through the board and a wedge would go away out of the board. So since bromine is on my left, and a dash is going, or a wedge would be going out of the board, I'm going to wedge bromine, and I'm going to dash hydrogen. So strangely enough, that's what the bond line structure would be. It's super weird, super crazy, but as long as you can remember, okay, my top and bottom are dashed, I need to make sure that however I'm drawing my chain, my eye perspective needs to see that, it needs to be reflected. Then you have to look at your Fisher projection and go, oh, okay, OH on my right, H on my left. However my eye's going, reflect that with wedges and dashes. All right, guys, we'll finish up the Fisher projection worksheet. This closes out stereochemistry. And next, we get into the real nitty-gritty part of OCHEM 1. We're going to be doing substitution reactions, elimination reactions. There's going to be curved arrows going every which way, but I promise this is where things get really good. This is where I really started to like OCHEM 
and I hope you do too. All right, see you later.